What are some of the assumptions that are being rethought here as investors looks like are much more convinced that the other stocks that aren't the magnificent seven and small caps really have some ways to go here? Well, first you have relative value. Uh, the multiple at which those stocks trade is dramatically lower uh -huh. uh, than the Magnificent Seven. Uh, second of all, uh, as you pointed out, those stocks are the ones that are most negatively affected by higher interest rates. And I think it's pretty clear we're closer to interest rate cuts by the Fed, uh -huh. and that is helpful to them. The one thing you didn't mention, uh, which I think is very important also, is that small caps tend to be uh, more domestic in their sales. Good point. And uh, so given the relative outperformance of the U.S. economy compared to the rest of the world, that's also a benefit to small cap stock and mid cap stocks. And absent in uh, your answer there was the, the benefits of the big technology companies. I mean, they are still making a lot of money, maybe not as much as investors would have liked. But um, do you see anything in the results and what they're saying that's worrying when it comes to how much they're spending on AI and how much it's showing up in their results? I think almost any time when there is this uh, world altering technological change. Mm -hmm. You go through a, a, a cycle. The first burst of that cycle is massive spending. Uh, then there is a part of the cycle where people say, well, what's the return going to be? And then coming out of the other side, there are companies that will be massive beneficiaries uh, of this uh, new technology. So there will be a sorting out. My guess is that collectively, uh, we'll see as much, if not more, benefit than we expect. That's typically what happens with ma massive technological change. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it won't be universally shared by all of the companies. I, I am curious, though, about what's driving that change. I mean, when you started your career, we were kind of going through a different type of technological right. change. Some of that aided, or at least seeded, we should say, by government involvement, government policies, government investment. We're kind of there again, though. This seems much more corporate-driven, though we know the Biden administration would like to be a little more involved. Do you feel, though, that the changes that are coming, even if they're not shared by all, that this is that inflection point, whether it's for investors, whether it's for the end user like ourselves, that this is that big inflection point? Well, I think there are, there are a couple of interesting things that are very different, in my view, about it. AI versus uh, Google and Meta and Netflix, uh, and that is that AI is something that literally is going to improve the performance of almost every company. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time, we're, we're having technological change that significantly affects the jobs of service workers, white collar workers, and uh, so Every company is going to improve their productivity and their margins utilizing AI. It's going to take a while yeah. uh, to happen. but And there's interesting thing is that it's likely that the greatest beneficiaries will be hardware uh, mm -hmm. companies and companies that have deep intellectual capital, almost consulting advisory type capabilities, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to uh, the big land grab yeah. that you had in direct to consumer businesses like Google and mm -hmm. Meta uh, and Apple. One other thing that seems kind of interesting about this phase, as opposed to the last big technological phase, was how many companies in this space are still private, meaning that for a whole cohort of at least public investors, they don't necessarily have access to be able to get in on the ground floor the way a lot of private investors have come. And I know that's been a broader change that we've seen in investing overall, where private markets have been, uh, at least for a certain uh, investor class, much more accessible than the public markets. Well, I think the, the reason for that is a couplefold. Number one, uh, these companies don't generate any earnings. Mm -hmm. uh, so valuing them in a public market is a little bit more challenging. The second is they're materially more risky than the average mm -hmm. public company and therefore uh, are more appropriate for large deep-pocketed institutional investors mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, by diversifying can afford to have some 
you know, what we call in the investment business donuts, yeah. where a lot of money is invested and it winds up being worthless. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, so that's, in my view, best done in the private world. I, I think you, you, if you look at the last set of, of technological innovations, you take a company like Amazon. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jeff Bezos brilliantly uh, put the pedal to the metal for 20 years mm -hmm. and created a category killer of a company. Mm -hmm. If you look, if you go back 20 years, uh, logically, Amazon should have been created by Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, they had the customer base, they had the uh, uh, countrywide distribution network, mm -hmm. they had all, uh, all the things, the logistics that Amazon had yeah. to build. Why didn't that happen? The reason is there were 20 years of negative income statement yeah. to build a huge terminal value. Right. Uh, we would have probably had five CEOs of Walmart uh, yeah. over that period of time if, if they had tried that. to yeah. do that, and the board would have been yeah. uh, attacked by activists uh, yeah. every year. Yeah. Uh, so it's very hard in a earning yeah. public company to do these yeah. uh, terminal value investments. The patience is just not there, right, from public investors. I want to get your take on politics because I know that you are a supporter of Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, you back her campaign. Um, what is the best argument you can make for why she is good for the U.S. economy? Well, I think if you look at the accomplishments of the Biden-Harris administration, and quite honestly, I, I've been mystified why the president and the vice president haven't focused on this more. Uh, many of the things that they accomplished were things that President Trump talked about and did nothing about. He talked about bringing technology uh, and uh, semiconductor jobs back to America. You know, the Biden-Harris administration passed the CHIPS Act. Mm. Uh, he talked about lowering drug prices. Nothing happened. Biden and Harris have actually lowered the price of insulin and allowed for the first time uh, Medicare and Medicaid to negotiate on certain uh, drugs. Uh, and so I think if you look at the uh, infrastructure, another one, uh, you will recall President Trump talked a lot about infrastructure. There are a lot of infrastructure weeks. Uh, and in reality, uh, Biden and President Biden and Vice President Harris were able to get a bipartisan bill. By the way, all three of these things that I talked about were mm -hmm. done on a bipartisan basis. Right. So I think if you look at the accomplishments of the Biden-Harris administration uh, as a, and uh, they are high relative to the rhetoric. If you look at the Trump administration, the rhetoric was high mm -hmm. and the accomplishments uh, were not uh, that great. Someone said to me, uh, or I heard it on one of the news shows the other day, uh, you know, Trump wasn't so bad if he were a silent movie. <laughs> Uh, I would say it the other way, yeah. if you just listened to him and, and you didn't see what he was actually doing, you would think he was actually accomplishing something, when in reality he didn't get that much done.